So here's a mechanism for drawing a Kirchhoffian trifolium. Uh, it's a figure 272. Um, it looks kind of complicated, but part of the complexity is just a scaling um, mechanism, a, a, a pantograph, which uh, multiplies something by two. And we're going to skip that and just put a uh, transformation in there. So what we create won't be um, quite as complicated as, as that. Um, OK, so uh, this mechanism starts um, with uh, a cycloid, basically it's like a spirograph, and um, we've got one uh, wheel rolling inside another. Um, so here's here's my outer wheel, and I'll draw. Um, yeah, I've got a radius one as well, but um, I also want to draw a line um, from here to here. And let's call this angle theta. And uh, I want to create um, another circle in there. And this is going to be my uh, little gear wheel. Um, and it's going to be a third of R in radius. And as it rolls, we're going to have a specific point on its radius. And so to model uh, this uh, R over three, this is going to be going three times the speed. So as theta opens up, this angle here is going to open up at three times that speed. So if we put in that angle, oh look, we're being given the option of this. We can't in GX web, uh, we just have to take what we've got. So we want this angle here, uh, BCD, to be 3 theta. So this one's going to have to be pi minus 3 times theta. OK, now, might as well, let's just make sure this looks like it's rolling properly. And we haven't got our, our, the signs uh, uh, wrong. And it does look like it's rolling properly, so that's, that's good. OK, so the mechanism. Um, ends up having a, a line that comes out um, you know basically we have, a, we have a line that we'll do it this segment we have a line that has got no fixed um, uh, it's not a fixed line so there's a slider here and the, the line comes out and slides through the slider but I'll just leave um, an unconstrained uh, length there there is now another quite long line so this one I will use infinite line uh, perpendicular to that, perpendicular, and then there's a final line that comes out from A, um, and that is perpendicular too. Now, an intermediate thing we can draw is the curve um, traced by E. This is not what we're going for in the end, but we'll, we'll just look at that um, as theta varies. Um, that doesn't look like what I want it uh, to do. So uh, I did not, um, something didn't uh, go right here. Ah, I know it didn't go right. Um, I didn't have uh, appropriate limits for theta. Um, so let's make theta go from uh, minus 3.14 uh, to 3.14. Okay, so this is drawing um, a little picture like that. But what we, the final bit of this mechanism is a pantograph which was able to scale from D to E and out uh, to double the distance there. Um, I'm going to do that instead using transformations. So I'm going to take D there, 
um, the way to reflect, I really want to just reflect it in E. Um, actually, that line is, is uh, perpendicular to it. So I can just reflect in, in this line here. That's quite, that's quite F. So as we, as we move around um, F, um, goes off that kind of way. Um, so the F is the point that we're doing uh, the locus of. And let's, uh, let's just create that. Locus of theta varies, um, you get uh, this picture. Now, you, you can create the pantograph in a number of different ways. So here's one pantograph that one could use uh, to create that. You could have a, um, a length out here. Here, these would be um, the same length as each other. So we'll give it a length A and make this one length A. And then you would take the center of these guys Center of these guys, and we would join them up. Now, of course, this is not um, doing its pantographing because we've already specified where E is, um, or sorry, F is. But as we as we uh, move, we can see how um, that mechanism would work. Um, okay, having done that, what is the equation of um, the curve? Uh, Tricholium. And we find that's the equation. Um, that's the equation there. Um, a fourth order curve. 